Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you about rhinosporidiosis. So I'm going to explain to you about the introduction part, life cycle, symptoms as well as the treatment which was given for a person who is infected with this type of disease. So coming to the introduction part of this rhinosporidiosis, it is a disease which is mainly caused by a causative organism. So causative organism is nothing but the, it is a type of organism which causes the particular type of disease. So here the disease is rhinosporidiosis, right? And the type of causative organism which causes this disease is called as rhinosporidium sibirae. And it belongs to the lower fungi class which is called as phycomycetes. Saber is a scientist who belongs to Argentina. In 1900, he discovered this rhinosporidium sibirae with the help of an electron microscope. And this rhinosporidiosis can be observed 75% in the male of human beings. In the countries like India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan as well as Brazil. And this rhinosporidiosis is considered as fungal disorder. According to the medical code, this fungal disorder, I mean this rhinosporidiosis belongs to ICD-10 family. And according to the recent research, research has been done in such a way that the DNA has been extracted from this rhinosporidium CBRI. I mean this causative agent, from this causative agent, DNA has been extracted and they concluded that this rhinosporidium CBRI belongs to a cyanobacterium origin. I mean this, this, this has been originated from the cyanobacteria family. And this rhinosporidiasis is been considered as granular metas diseases. And here one of the important thing I have to mention here is that this rhinosporidiasis is a disease which is also called as chronic disease. I am mentioning the chronic disease because when, once the person is affected with this type of disease, uh, it may last for a long period of time. Okay, that, that is called as chronic disease. Okay, so if you see here at the regions of nasopharynx, at the mucous membrane of the nasopharynx and in the region of oropharynx and conjunctiva external genitalia, at, at all of these regions, this rhinosporidiasis disease occurs and at the 70% nasopharynx region will get affected by this type of disease called, nas uh, sorry, this rhinosporidiasis. So coming to this uh, causative agent, rhinosporidium sibirae can also be seen in cattle, horses and also in the mules and the transmission occurs by inhaling the dust or you know consuming spoiled uh, spoiled water for example uh, normally this type of disease can be transmitted in the for example if you are if you are swimming or else if you are bathing in a polluted lakes or polluted uh, ponds then what happens is that if if that lakes or uh, you know if, if that lakes or else if that ponds consists of this causative agent called rhinosporidium cb right then what happens is that sometimes you will inhale the water or sometimes you will consume that water i mean you will drink that water right and then what happens is that if that uh, if that ocean or else sorry if that water consists of this type of uh, causative organisms then immediately it will enter into your nose or else it will immediately enter into your you know mouth and finally it reaches into your body right and in that way the transmission occurs and in the regions of nose, eyes, ears, skin, genitalis and rectum through these regions the transmission of this uh, you know causative agent occurs and at the age of uh, at the age of 30 to 40 years people will get affected with this type of disease known as rhinosporidiosis and coming to this microscopic description you know that organism the causative organism is very large in size and it uh, the size ranges up to 100 to 450 microns and, um, and the sporangia is thick walled and what is the sporangia? I am going to explain you it in the life cycle so that you can clearly understand what is meant by sporangia. And the sporangia is thick walled and inside the sporangia endospores will be present. Thousands of endospores will be present and each of the endospores is the range of the, the size range of the endospores are 6 to 10 microns. And coming to the discoveries. So here uh, this discovery, remember this, uh, you know, they remember the scientist name, it is very much important to remember here. At the, at the year of 1992, at the year of 1892, Malbran is a scientist who observed the organism in nasal region. At the 1923, Ashworth is a scientist who described their life cycle. So now let us discuss about the life cycle which was uh, discovered by Ashworth. So the life cycle of rhinosporidiasis was first given by Ashworth in 1923 and the life cycle of this disease occurs in human body. So now let us see the life cycle. Okay. So the life cycle begins with the immature sporangium. So this is called as immature sporangium and it is also called as endospore or else it is also called as sporangiospora. And if you see here, this is uh, this is an immature sporangium which consists of chitinous cell wall. So this is known as chitinous cell wall, which uh, this black color background which I have drawn is known as chitinous cell wall. And here the nucleus will be present and also the cytoplasm will also be present there. So now this immature sporangium will enter into the next stage. And, and remember here the size of this immature sporangium ranges from 7 to 10 microns and entering into the next stage what happens is that the size increases that's nothing but the size ranges from the 50 to 60 microns 
and here it is called as immature bimelar sporangia and then in this stage what happens is that the nucleus which is present inside the cytoplasm what happens is that that nucleus will undergo some mitotic divisions you know it undergoes mitotic division so you know what is mean by mitosis right it is a cell division so uh, i have explained about the mitosis briefly and the link of that video will be given in the description box so if you are interested you can watch the video of mitosis so after the you know after this stage of immature bimelar sporangia it enters into the next stage and even this stage it also consists of immature stage only but if you see here the spores will be formed inside the cytoplasm this is the cytoplasm right and inside the cytoplasm spores will be formed and the spores which has been formed are immature stage hence these are called as immature spores all of this called as immature spores and i have said you that uh, this consists of cell wall right this black color one which i have drawn as cell wall and that cell wall will become bilamellar and even that cell wall will also be in immature stage only and the outer layer of that you know cell wall is chitinous and the inner layer is cellulose composed of cellulose right and I have said you that many mitotic divisions occurs right and this is a stage where the seventh division occurs and the size which ranges is up to the 100 microns right and you remember this is the immature stage and even this is also an immature stage so coming to the next stage it becomes into mature stage so what happens in the mature stage endospores will be formed so now you have to not you have to not call it as a spores you have to call it as a mature endospores up to here we have called it as a immature spores right so now here we will call it as a mature endospores and here the cell walls will also get matured what i have said you here the cell wall will not get matured right that is nothing but the outer chitinous and the inner cellulose will not get matured but here if you see here this mature chitinous and mature cell wall will be present here sorry mature cellulose will be present here here and then what happens here is that i have said you that several mitotic divisions occurs right and even this mature endospores will also undergo several mitotic divisions inside the cytoplasm itself and then what happens is that the number of mature endospores will get increased why it get increased because uh, the division occurs then the number of mature endospores will also get increased right so when the mature endospore size will get increased then what happens immediately uh, you know this mature sporangia i mean the next stage which enters here is known as this is known as mature sporangia inside the mature sporangia mature endospores will be present and this mature endospores undergo several mitotic divisions which i have said enough and now what happens is that the number of endospores will get increased and when the or when the number of endospores will get increased what happens immediately the size of this mature sporangia will also get increased you know because the pressure will increase then the size will also get increased and here the size ranges up to the 200 to 300 microns here the estimation has been given why the estimation has been given because uh, you know uh, as the pressure increases uh, you know the size also increase so there will be no particular uh, there is no particular uh, calculation of the length which is given for this so here uh, estimation of this size which is given for you so 200 to 300 microns of uh, you know size size has been seen in this mature sporangia so here in this mature sporangia the cytoplasm region consists of mature endospores right as this reach as this get bulged what happens is that in next stage what happens is a protrusion out occurs so here that's nothing but the cell wall region of this mature sporangium will get break down so when that cell wall region will get break down then what happens is that the endospores which are present in that will get uh, will get protruded out and here the opening occurs right and that opening is called as operculum and through that operculum what happens is that that mature endospores which are present inside the cytoplasm of the mature sporangium will get protruded out and here the one thing which you have to remember is that when this when this mature endospores will get protruded out this will get protruded out in the form of free electron dense bodies why it is called as free electron dense bodies because it is surrounded with the nutritive granules and here the size of this free electron dense bodies is up to 7 microns and again it enters into the next stage which is called as immature sporangium and the size ranges up to the 7 to 10 microns and again the total life cycle will get repeated right so this is about the life cycle so again i am going to explain you briefly for your better understanding so if you see here this is a mature sporangium which consists of a nucleus and here the nucleus undergoes mitotic division in the next stage and here we have to remember the microns uh, the, you know you have to remember the size of these cells and then what happens immature this is called as immature bilamellar sporangia it is called as bilamellar sporangia because it consists of two cell walls i mean the two cell walls are immature and you can, you can identify that immature cell wall with the help of a microscope in the next stage at the seventh micro mitotic division and at the seventh mitotic division two cell walls you can you can get find but the the cell walls which has been formed here are immature stage when it gets mature it it gets mature when it enters into the next stage and here immature spores has been formed and here the immature spores will get converted into the mature endospores and here the cell walls will also get matured 
you know mature chitinous and mature cellulose like that and this is called as mature sporangium and this mature sporangium what happens is that as the number of endospores uh, as the number of endospores will get increased then the pressure will also get increased in such a way that the opening will be formed i mean the breakdown of the cell wall will form and that opening is called as operculum so with the help of that operculum what happens is that the endospores which are present in the cytoplasm of the mature sporangium will get protruded out and then what happens is that this uh, but remember one thing here this endospores which has been protruded out you know, will, which will get protruded out in the form of free electron dense bodies. Why it is called a free electron dense bodies? Because it is surrounded with the nutritive ganglions and the size of this free electron dense bodies it ranges up to the 7 microns. And this will get again converted into the immature sporangium, which is also called as endospore, which is also called as sporangia. And again, the total life cycle will get repeated. So, this is about the life cycle of rhinospodiasis. So, coming to the symptoms of the person who is infected with this type of disease called rhinospodiasis. So, the first symptom is unilateral nasal obstruction, second is abyssitis, and Third is local pruritis and fifth, fourth one is rhinorrhea and fifth one is post nasal discharge with cough. And the treatment which was given for this is only the one medicine which has been discovered till now in our India and that medicine is called as Dapsone. And the IUPAC name which was given for it, the Dapsone is a common name and the IUPAC name which was given for that medicine is 4,4 diamino diphenyl sulfone. And what is the main purpose of this medicine is that uh, what I have said you in life cycle mature sporangia will be formed right and that stoppage I mean that killing of that maturation of that sporangia occurs. I mean uh, this sporangia mature, mature sporangia will be formed right when you take that medicine this mature sporangia will get killed. So that's the main region uh, that's the main purpose of this uh, you know treatment of this dopazone sorry dapsone. So this is about the treatment and also the life cycle and the symptoms and the introduction part of this rhinospodiasis. So now I'm going to show you some of the pictures for a person who will get infected with this type of disease called as rhinospodiasis. So that is the main function of this dapsone. So now let us see some of the pictures of a person who is infected with this type of disease called as rhinospodiasis.